first I'll go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Victoria Marbolin. I am the Dean of Scholars with the Upwork in the Middle School. So I work primarily with the middle school. Um, I work a lot with discipline and the culture of the school. Um, so tonight we're going to go over some things about school culture and how we need your help with that. So I'm going to point your attention up here to the screen. This is Uplift Luna Middle School's vision for next year. So this is the vision that we created and this is what we want our school to look like next year. So Uplift Luna Middle School works in partnership with families to support the development of responsible scholars who are proud to be on the path to college graduation. I especially want to point out this part right here works in partnership with families. Um, we absolutely recognize like this is tough work and we can't do it without you. We need your help. And so today's session is really going to be about things that we're asking you to commit to um, in ways that we need your help in making this a reality. Right? We're all here to get your scholars to and through college, but we need your help with that. Okay, so what we're going to go over today is our commitment to excellence. Um, so at the beginning of every year, scholars sign a commitment to excellence, all the things they're going to do um, and commit to in order to get to and through college. Um, staff members sign a commitment to excellence, everything we are dedicating ourselves to do to help your scholar. And then finally, we ask that parents also sign a commitment to excellence um, to really just signify that we are working together to make this a reality. So if you could actually go ahead and open up your folders, there's a copy of the commitment to excellence. And that is what we're going to go over today. It is a bright yellow piece of paper. I think there's one that's like pale yellow and one that's bright yellow. It doesn't matter. One's for you and then one I'll keep. Um, so just pull out either one. And there is one side is English and one side is Spanish. Um, so whichever you're most comfortable with, we're just going to go through those kind of So the first commitment that we ask for you, or uh, from you, excuse me, is um, making sure that your scholar arrives on time um, and making sure that they stay for the entire school day. So middle schoolers need consistency. Um, they need a consistent routine every single day. Um, there's a lot of other things that aren't consistent in middle school, and so we really just ask that you get them here on time every day so they can go through that same morning routine every day, get their day started out right, and have a successful rest of their day. Um, also, make sure they stay through the entire day so they're not missing any precious learning time. All right, the next commitment is just making sure that you pick up your scholar on time. Um, so we haven't really enforced it this year, but we will start next year. Um, if you aren't here within the window of time that we say your scholar needs to get picked up, there are actually penalties, unfortunately. Um, so we would charge about a dollar a minute or $10 for 15 minutes. Um, so, you know, we have like a 30 minute car line window and then we even give you a little extra time after that. But we do want to protect the time of our staff, allow them to go do their after school programs, um, go home to their families. The front office staff is only here so late. And so we really just ask that you get your scholars picked up on time. Okay. Um, this one is also about attendance. Um, so just get your scholar here as much as possible. There's that obvious piece of like, if they're not here, they're not learning. Um, and that is super important that they're here and they're in their seats and they're learning every day. Um, but something you might not know is that we also actually get a lot of our funding from attendance. So every time your scholar is in their seat at that 10 o'clock attendance, at every day at 10 is when we, um, we, we use that number. And so um, every time they're not in their seat at 10, we're actually losing money. So we just ask, unless it's an emergency, we understand, or if they're sick, please leave them at home. We don't want them here if they're really sick. But other than that, please get them here every single day. We use that money for you know, after school programs and curriculum and other things that help support your scholar's education. Um, this next commitment is about um, allowing your scholar to stay after school. So there's a lot of things that might happen after school. One of them might be tutoring. This is when we pull small groups who all help need help with the same objective um, and give them that extra intervention. Um, it might be an after school program such as sports or clubs. You know, this year we have like our robotics club and our dance team. So there's a lot of cool opportunities after school. So we just ask that you make those arrangements so your scholar can participate. Unfortunately, there is also this detention piece. Um, hopefully none of your scholars will ever have detention. But if they do, we just ask that you please allow them to stay after. It's so important to us that scholars see that 
when they make choices, there's always going to be consequences, and we want to follow through on those consequences, and part of that is making sure that you can make arrangements for them to stay for detention. Okay, any questions so far? Okay. All right, next. Um, so this next commitment is um, helping out your scholar at home. Um, so chances are your scholar will have homework just about every single night. Um, that's part of our model, or part of our college prep model is providing them with that extra work after school to get them prepared for college. Um, so we ask that you provide, like, provide a quiet space for them or make sure that they're not using those phones that I see they're using right now. Um, you know, just like time away from technology and time away from a lot of noise that they can just sit and do their homework. Um, it's so easy to get distracted. We all know by the phones and the iPads. Y'all can use your phone. I was just using you as an example. Um, but it's so easy to get distracted by those things. So please, when they get home, provide them, a, you know, usually about an hour to sit down, do their work without any distractions. Also, if they have questions, allow them to call their teacher. Um, something else that is a little bit different about this school is that teachers usually give their cell phone numbers. So if your scholar doesn't understand something, let them call. And we never want them to come in the next day and say, well, I didn't understand, so I didn't do it. Um, their te your teachers are there to help you, so please utilize that. And then lastly, um, just reading with your scholar every night. 20 minutes a night is going to make a huge difference in your scholar's education. Reading is a skill that you need for all subjects. Um, and so if you're reading with them every single night, you're going to see their reading levels plummet, or excuse me, they're, they're gonna rise. They're gonna get so much better if you're using um, that 20 minutes every single night. All right, the next couple are about communication. We are here for you. We're here to listen to your concerns. We're here to talk through any problems. Um, we just ask that we model that professional communication as much as possible. Um, we expect your scholars to handle themselves very professionally. That's why they wear the uniforms. Um, and it's, it's important that they learn that professional communication as well, and they look to us as adults to see what that looks like. So please come to us with questions and concerns. Please do so professionally. Okay. The next one is also about communication. Um, so we ask that you just follow the chain of communication so we can try to solve issues at the school level. Um, so if you have a concern with a teacher, start with that teacher. Reach out to that teacher, see if you can get that result. If you can't, um, then you can absolutely come to administration. Um, we, we're more than willing to help you out as well. Um, you will receive something a little bit more concrete about this, like who you should call for what, so be looking for that over the summer. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. All right. Next, um, every Thursday we send home a Thursday folder. Um, there is really important information in this Thursday folder. Hopefully you are all getting this um, currently, but if not, you should be looking for it. So the Thursday notes go out with important events and dates. Um, progress reports go home in Thursday folders. Report cards go home in Thursday folders. Permission slips. Um, so please be looking for that and be asking for it. Um, this is how we communicate a lot of important information. If you don't, for some reason, get the Thursday notes, they're always posted online. So that's also another option. They should be posted on our website. So that is another option for you to get that information. Okay, so next commitment that we ask from all of you um, is participating in meeting, meetings and conferences. Um, you know your scholar better than anybody else, and sometimes we just need your help. Um, so we might call you in for a conference just to brainstorm ideas of how we can best support your scholar. And we just ask that you're willing to work with us and come to these conferences um, so we can brainstorm and really work in partnership, like our vision said, really work in partnership and get them, you know, ultimately to and through college. Okay, so we do have set aside two times a year, I believe, we're like set parent-teacher conferences, but outside of that, there might also be other times we just need you to come in and help us out. All right, moving right along. So next, um, support the academic expectations and curricular programs. Um, so this might look like letting them, you know, read the book that they're reading in ELA class or participate in the field trip that they're going on for, you know, history class. Um, as your scholar, you know, gets older, there might be some more mature content. This is more for high school. Some of you do have high schoolers, though. Um, so just allowing them to engage with that mature um, material as they get, you know, closer to high school and college. 
Okay, so next, um, I will be a role model for my child as I follow the school rules, codes, policies, and procedures, and the core values established by the school. Um, so this really is important because we, we need to model what these things look like in order to show your scholar what this should be. Um, so, you know, here at Luna, um, some of you are well aware that we, you know, we focus on a lot of the smaller things. A lot of our rules, you know, you'll hear the kids sometimes like, why do we have to wear a uniform? Or why do we have to sit a certain way? Or why do we have to track the person that's talking? And we really do hold those things sacred because we believe that if we focus on all of those things, we're going to have less of the bigger things. And so that is why we focus on these little things. That's why we have the rules that we do. Um, that's why we have the policies that we do is because we believe that that's really going to get your scholar closer to college. Um, so the more we can model what that looks like and reinforce that at home, then the better off we're going to be. So this next commitment is similar, but this is just ensuring that your child follows all the rules and procedures. Um, so we have to send the message that we are on the same page and we are working together. If they think that they don't have to follow certain rules at home that they do have to follow at school, then it is going to confuse them. Like I said, middle schoolers need consistency. So the more consistent we can be with the rules and following the rules that we have here at school, the better off. Um, this last part right here, I will support the school as it administers consequences. Most likely, if your scholar is receiving a consequence, um, such as a suspension or something like that, you'll be hearing from me as the dean who handles a lot of discipline. I just ask that you work with me and just really send the same message that like whatever behavior it was that they exhibited, that that's also not okay at home. Um, just the more, like I said, the more we can work in partnership, then the better off we'll be. Okay. Any questions so far? All right, there is one more commitment that we'll go over before we start signing. Um, so one other way that we ask you to support the school is um, completing 20 involvement hours. Um, so we don't call these volunteer hours because it's not just volunteering. So it's just 20 hours of being involved in your scholar's education. So this, this right here would be involvement. Okay, coming to a PACS meeting would be involvement. Coming to a parent-teacher conference, that's one way that you can be involved. Um, coming to VIP meetings that we have, that's another way. It could also be voluntary. It could be volunteering for the book fair. Um, it could be volunteering to chaperone a dance. It could be volunteering um, to help out with Teacher Appreciation Week. Um, so it could be either one of these things. We just ask that you are involved for 20 hours every year. And we keep track of that, so we have a way to log that and keep track of it um, and let you know. We'll give you updates of where you are in terms of meeting these 20 hours. Um, but this is just one last commitment that we ask of you because, again, we need your help. We, can't, we cannot do this work without you. Hi, does anyone have any questions about these, any concerns? Okay, so by signing this, you're saying as parents, we are committed um, to doing all of these things and helping us get your scholar to move through college. So if you could go ahead and sign. Um, you can put whatever grade your scholar is going to be in next year. 